Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades and today we're going to be talking about how to improve storytelling in a pitch deck. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So a great story is key to anything, whether that is onboarding investors, whether that is onboarding customers, or even onboarding A-plus team members that you want to bring to your team. Without story, there is nothing. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking it down for you, how to really bring the essence of that storytelling in your pitch deck so that you're able to get in front of investors and really captivate their attention and doing it with a bank. So in today's video, again, I find that you're going to get all this value. You're going to find the step by step. And again, it's all about making sure that in those two minutes and 41 seconds that you have of attention of the investor when they are reviewing your pitch deck, that you're able to really get them excited. So with that being said, let's get into it. So storytelling makes all the difference when it comes to fundraising success. Here's the thing. It's all about future and possibility. That's why the investor is investing in you. They're not so much betting on the historicals because the past is in the past. What they're betting on is the present and then also the future. So that's why you want to get them excited. It's like when you read a book. When you read a book and they're telling you what they ate that day or even what weather it was that day happening, they make you be feel or feel part of, 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 of that moment. And what you want to do with the investor is remember that they're investing in you. They want to invest in being part of the journey. So you need to really make them be part of it somehow so that they get really excited. This is like a movie at the end of the day. You need to walk them slowly through what that story is. Don't be all over the place. Don't try to overwhelm them with information to make sure that they get it. You just need to give them the story right and do it in a concise way because the attention span is very small. So a great story is one that is emotional and one that, is, that inspires action. Uh, here's an example. I remember some years ago I was at a panel basically judging a pitch deck competition. And one of the uh, attendees or one of the people that was presenting, she was an amazing founder that pitched this story that left everyone breathless or speechless. And essentially what she said was that when she was growing up in her family, one of her sisters had this uh, perhaps, you know, like a, a imbalance or unbalance uh, mentally and that they needed to find a physician. So a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So as a result of this, the family really struggled a lot to be able to find the right type of individual. And the way that she was sharing her story, the way that she was able to capture the essence of it, it literally brought all the attendees to tears. And this is an amazing example of how you can move, touch, and inspire the people that are in front of you. You want to be able to share a story that is relatable to them. Maybe they've, they've, they've actually experienced that situation directly, indirectly. And that's how you get really people excited about what you're doing. You need to get that action out of them. So storytelling is part of the financial story as well. And the reason for this is because you're going to be projecting a story over the course of time with the numbers. And that's going to be whether it's three-year projection, five-year projection, and you want to be able to put it in a way that is digestible for the investor. Very easy to see. Not just like grabbing a screenshot and throwing it on your pitch deck. You want to be able to slowly walk them. If you need to break down the financials into different slides on your pitch deck, that's totally fine. You could even put between three to five slides where you can break down the EBITDA, the revenues, the net income, whatever that is, or even the number of customers and how that is growing over time. But don't overwhelm people and try to capture it all in one single slide. Make it easy for them so that they can see the story over the course of time. Now, in the story, if they are asking you for certain numbers and you don't remember them, that's totally okay. Don't try to make them up because that's not going to put you in a good spot. Just send them a note later to thank them for the meeting and then just say, by the way, the numbers that you asked for, they're this, this and that. Whatever that is, but don't make it up on the spot. So the problem part of the story is a big one. This is essentially your why, 
Remember that day where you experienced that problem for the first time and how you incubated the idea of a potential solution that would cover that gap to that problem and how that incubated over the course of time? Perhaps there was one single event that really pushed you over the edge to say, you know what, this is the time to actually do something about this. And that's the moment where you decided to take action. So that's exactly the way that you want to bring that problem to their attention. And that's the why, the why that is driving your passion and the why that is driving the culture as well of the company that you're looking to build. The team story is also a key one, right? So here what you want to do is you want to share with the investor how you're all coming together. How did the founding team come together? How did you guys meet? Why do you share that same, perhaps, passion towards the problem that you're looking to resolve? What makes them capable to actually, you know, really bring their expertise, their thought leadership, their skill set into the execution and into the 18 to 24 month roadmap that you're looking to really put and implement over the course of time? These are the things that the investor likes to, likes to see and essentially hear. Without vision, there's nothing. There's no culture. There is no being sync, you know, on the same page with your team members. There has to be a clear vision. And the best way to think about this is imagine if you go to sleep tonight and you perhaps go to sleep for five years and you wake up in a world where the vision of your business, that business that you would like to envision over the course of time, imagine all of a sudden everything is realized. What does that world look like? And what does your business look like? Once you're able to really answer that for yourself, you have a clear idea of what the vision of your business is. And you need to get people enrolled in that vision. Everyone needs to be able to add their own splash of color as part of the team so that everyone really feels that sense of ownership that the investor really wants, you know, to really, you know, have you guys have. Remember to use pictures that tell stories. It's much better. And, and here's a clear example, like on the cover, on the cover slide of your pitch deck, essentially people try to just put a logo, they put a name, they put a phone number, but this is your chance to show the trailer of your movie. Before you go and watch a movie, you've watched a trailer so that you have a good understanding that it's going to be a good use of your time to go and watch the movie. The same thing happens with pitch decks. Since the investor is only going to invest two minutes and 41 seconds, they want to really get the cover. Perhaps it's a picture of what you're doing, the company in action, and right away it establishes the expectations for what they are about to review. So essentially you can do this on the cover. You can also do it throughout the presentation where you're using certain visuals that is allowing you to really balance more the text with the, with the actual images. Obviously, the less text and the more images, the better, but you want to make sure that you're not overwhelming whoever is reviewing the presentation with too many visuals. So storytelling at the end of the day is an art. And obviously, if you're very technical or you don't have the skill set, it's not going to be easy. Even the most like smartest people that I've known you know, they still have issues with storytelling, with really bringing people in, sharing that level of detail. So it's totally fine if you are not mastering this. So what you can do is maybe you can get a copywriter, you can get perhaps a journalist or a master storyteller that essentially helps you to really capture the essence of your business or the story in a way in which is compelling and in a way in which is exciting. So anyhow, Hit a like on this video, also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And then also leave a comment and let me know how you're thinking about storytelling. And if you're raising capital, shoot me an email at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. I would love to help out. Thank you so much for watching.